Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Twit Photo with Catherine Hall and Leo LaFleur. Episode 17, recorded July 26th, 2011. Zach Arias. Twit Photo is brought to you by Carbonite. Backing up the files on your PC or Mac is safe and easy with Carbonite. For a free trial, plus two free months with purchase, visit Carbonite.com. Offer code TWITPHOTO. And by Netflix. Watch thousands of TV episodes and movies on your PC, Mac, iPad, iPhone, or TV instantly. All stream directly to you, saving you time, money, and hassle. For your free 30-day trial, go to Netflix.com slash TWIT. It's time for Twit Photo episode. What is this? Episode 17. 17, ladies and gentlemen. My wonderful uh, co host, actually, really the host of the show, Catherine Hall, Catherine Hall Studios. A great photographer oh, in her own you. right. It's so nice to see you once again. I'm so thrilled. Look at this. It's so amazing. Look at this. So excited to be here, and I feel like that we're making history. Well, we're, we're on a new set, in case you didn't know this. To me. Yeah, and uh, it is kind of. Historic. We're in the new Twit Brick House Studios. Yeah. This is the first week here. Our first show on this set first ever. First show on living room set. And we have one of our most important photographers. Well, it's hard to say. We've talked to so many, so many great, great photographers. Ones. But I'm really excited about uh, Zach Arias. Will you tell us a little bit about Zach? Yeah. I, I mean, first of all, his work's amazing. But one of the main reasons I wanted to have, hi, Zach, <laughs> have him on the show is I think what I admire most about him is his courage. And I'm not talking courage I'm a photojournalist and I'll go to a war zone, but a different type of courage where he's not afraid to be vulnerable and be himself. And I think from an education standpoint, he's really good at sharing how things really are versus the um, sort of mask that many people wear. Interesting. And so I'm, I think that for me, that's one of the most inspiring things about Zach. Zach, so. welcome to Twit Photo. Why, thank you. It is, uh, <clears throat> it's just an honor to be here and then, and, you know, to be the first guest in the new, uh, yeah. in the new digs that you have. Uh, it's awesome. So thank you very much for having me. I really appreciate it. Well, Zach's on vacation, too. So I know. We... Zach, you're on vacation. This is I am. Pure, yeah, we... pure devotion. <laughs> We're very grateful. Our so... kids uh, start school next week, so this is our last blowout of the summer. <laughs> I know that feeling. If I look at uh, the photos, and you've, you've got a great website, uh, Uh You post also uh, photos on uh, 500px.com. Uh, let, me, let me pull up a photo here, uh, for instance. Um, do you do any studio work? It looks like it's almost all, all street photography, um, well, uh, architectural. Well, the street photography is... is a beginning of new personal work for me. Um, I do a lot of studio photography, a lot of location. I do editorial and commercial uh, portraiture. And uh, if you go to my main website, that's where you'll see all of that. Uh, 500 Picks is sort of my personal outlet uh. of, um, you know, street and things that aren't necessarily work related, but something that I really love doing. Has a lot of your work-related stuff come started with personal projects? So, for example, you start doing a certain type of work, and then it ends up being something that you later get your income on? No, it's it's probably absolutely the opposite for me right now. Um, I've been busy doing my commercial work and my editorial and my assignment work, um, and I'm finally now making myself take the time uh, and put the energy and the resources into doing personal work um, because my portfolio for the last eight years has just been assignment work. Got it. A lot of bands, hip hop, yeah. rock. A lot of bands. Are you, yeah. Do you yep. love music, Zach? I love music. So that's I, a big inspiration I can't inspiration play music, um, but, but I do love working with musicians. So how is the 500 Picks website? Like what, what do you feel is good about it? Why should people be on it? Because I'm, uh, I'm not on it, and I'm considering it. And, and you killed your Flickr account, which is huge. Oh, totally oh you killed, killed your Flickr, Flickr account? 
I'm done with Flickr. So Flickr. tell me, Flickr. why did you kill Flickr, Flickr and why are you on 500 dead picks? To me. Dead. No. <laughs> um, well, I mean, Flickr looks like it's about 14 years old. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's ancient internet land. Um, it's just clunky. It's clunky on the mobile version. It's it's just a clunky Yahoo site, and and it's unfortunate that that with all of the power that Yahoo could put behind uh, something like Flickr, that they, they they could have made it even better. What what I think what holds Flickr together is the community there. I agree. Uh, yeah. But I'm not. I used to be more involved in the community, but with Twitter and Facebook and just all the other stuff and four kids. Um, I, I'm just not in those communities on Flickr any longer. So for, for me, Flickr was this sort of dumping ground, like, hey, this is work I like, but I don't have really a place for it on my own commercial uh, website. And, but I, want, I need some place to drop these pictures. So Flickr was sort of that dumping ground for me for a long time. Um, but... Honestly, I, I log into Flickr and I look at it and I go, God, this is such a dump of a website. <laughs> dump was the I right wanna, word. <laughs> I don't want to put my pictures on here anymore. Yeah. Um, it's not that my pictures are oh so amazing and deserve so much better than this. It's not that at all. It's just a dumpy looking website. So uh, some number of people um, started talking about 500 pics on Twitter. I've, and I've I really enjoyed it. it. Yeah, I think this is a nice uh, and amazing variety of photos on here. I just can't believe quality. what quality level is on the site. Yeah. It's just I a, love it. It's and it, it, it inspires people to, you know, 500 pics is not the place to upload 100 pictures of your, you know, corporate office party. Um, and they really do kind of, uh, it's art. you know, tell you, say, hey, upload your best stuff, right. not just all your stuff. Which yeah. is why I've uploaded nothing. <laughs> I'm a member, so but I've uploaded nothing. That's one of the things I think you really advocate for is, is you do a lot of critiques and just helping. And by the way, just for you, you guys that don't know, did you know Leo, he does critiques on his blog. Oh, that's so great. So yes. anyone can send in their, it could be a Flickr account, their website, whatever, oh. to critique at ZachArias.com. That's so generous. And then him and his wife, Meg, will go through and do a full critique and they're really, wow. really great. Um, but why do you think critiquing is so important for photographers, whether they're young, emerging enthusiasts, or pros? Um, well, we need feedback. We need real, honest to God feedback. Um, and we, you know, it's you can post pictures online in forums or Flickr or Facebook, and you you can get the wow, that's great, that's awesome. I sure love your pictures. Blah 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 blah. Um, I don't, is it great? Is it awesome? Who are the people actually, you know, giving you critique? Like I seek critique for my work. Um, and I'm always looking up the food chain. Um, always look up the food chain from wherever you are. Uh, so if you're just uh, an emerging photographer, you're just kind of getting started, you're trying to do this professionally, you need to find a professional photographer who does do it for a living uh, in your town, take them out to coffee, and ask for real, honest feedback. And then you have to pull yourself away from the pictures. No excuses, no, uh, you, you can't, you know, s try to describe your work before showing it. You just put your work out there and you say, tell me what you think. That's and you brave. sit back and you take it. Wow. Um, yeah. And my wife and I, uh, Meg, she's not a photographer, so she doesn't come at this from, she comes at this more as the kind of Jane public kind of viewpoint um, I come at it from a photographer standpoint um, and it's not academic we don't sit there and go well we believe that if you would have opened your aperture to f2 to get a shallower depth field it would have increased the contrast and the juxtaposition of the, you know no it's like uh yeah this picture kind of sucks I'm sorry but you, sucks, you, dude. you don't ever need to shoot this picture again in your life and here's why because I could have that picture for $9 at Walmart. Mm. And yeah. why do you want to com compete with Walmart? You don't. So you have to shoot something better than that. And it's uh, overall, most people take it pretty well. We've gotten a few emails back and forth and some hate mail. And <laughs> we've, we've had one person completely leave the industry. I forgive uh, you for really? that. Really? <laughs> yeah. You, you chase somebody but, out. 
Well, they weren't meant you to know, be I, if I, they can't take a critique. No kidding. You know, I, you know, I sent an email back and I said, look, I'm sorry that, you know, it, it hit you so hard. But honest to God, if, if that made you close up right. shop, you, you would have never made it. Yeah, ever. exactly. Like, so you saved them time. Seriously. Right. I, I have walked out of critiques in tears, like saying, I'm going to leave. I'm never going to do this again. I suck. Um, and then I gather myself up. I look at my work. I go, they're right. Yeah. <laughs> it does suck. I have a lot of work ahead of me. And I just keep going. You know? well, I think the hard thing as photographers is we are, it's so subjective, first of all, but we get yeah. so attached. And so if you spend a lot of time on a photo, you're really invested in it, you're intuitively, you just love the photo. That's and true so, of all art. If you're a painter, if yeah, you're a writer, a music, you fall it doesn't in matter. love with what you do. That's why you need the critique, because you you're not objective. I don't put, I really honestly don't put anything online without at least one person, well, usually I try to ask a few people getting their feedback, and that's why these communities are so great. You can put it out in 500 Picks or other places and see what people's reactions are to photos, and right. I think the goal is to not shoot for one or two people liking it, but what's the pictures that everyone seems to like, because those are the ones right. that you want out there. Zach, you strike you. me yep. as extraordinarily <laughs> generous, too. I mean, you and your wife are generous with your am. time I'm, doing that. <laughs> yeah, really I know. Generous. But I'm I also noticed humble. on these great yeah. images on your website, in your portfolio, I can download a PDF of these. I mean, far from, you know, so many people, they put watermarks on this stuff. They don't want people to see it. They do little tiny thumbnails. You're saying, go ahead, yeah. download a PDF. Enjoy well, it. Well, yeah, now... Now, I have to say my PDF is, is uh, that PDF link's currently broken. We're working on that. But, yes, my portfolio is, as soon as we get amazing. the PDF thing working, will be available for download because what I need is I need an art director or photo editor to sit down, look at something on my website and go, I want to take this photographer to this meeting and pitch them to shoot right. this job. Right. And so let me download this PDF real quick and I can take that into a meeting. Um, you know, I don't get into the whole heavy watermarking and, you know, here's my photography. It's on the web. If somebody's going to steal it, they're going to steal it. Right. Um, that's not an invitation because if I find you, I'll come after you. But, um, yeah, you know, yeah, I don't want to, the whole reason my photography is on the web is so people can find it and hire me. Right. Yeah. And what's the story behind know, this see, photo? I, this is like the, the horses of Lascaux cave. A guy and a, a acrobat. A, I mean, this is so beautiful. This is a painting. I love this. This is a. Um, it's a show called Cavalia, and it's kind of a Cirque du Soleil esque uh, sort of show, uh, but it's equestrian. Uh, so it involves horses. So there's acrobatics and people, you know, three people tall and jumping mm. off running horses and doing all sorts of crazy things that mm. take your breath away. And I was hired, actually, Ted Turner's daughter was doing a performance in this show. And I was given really kind of unprecedented access. And my whole, the whole thing I had to do for that whole night was this. shoot a picture of Ted Turner's daughter riding a horse. Um, <laughs> That's a good commission. I, yeah. <laughs> That's all I had to do. And then I had to do like the kind of like PR happy, snappy, gripping right. grins you know, with Ted um, after the show, but I had full access. So I went into it and I said, you know what? I'm going to shoot this as though I were to shoot it on my own. Um, I got my PR shots. I kept that client happy, but then I shot this project on my own, put it on my blog. The owner of uh, the production found it on my blog two days later and called me up and wanted to fly me to Miami to continue shooting for it. That's awesome. So, um, Interesting choices. These are black and white. I'm sure yes. this was a very colorful show. Yes. So yes. what made you choose to go black and white? I, I want to... I, I like to go in places that are unexpected. So, wow, look at this really colorful show. I'm going to shoot a black and white <laughs> because everyone's going to expect, oh, right. go and shoot color. Um, but, but nobody looks at this show black and white. I... I did my research on the show. Oh. Their promotional pictures are in black and white. Oh, interesting. Um, but uh, all of the coverage of the oh. show, I, I couldn't find any it's coverage amazing. of that show oh, in black and white. Such good shots. Yeah. 
And, it, and it's just, great, too, because there, uh, there's a lot of movement. And I love how you've expressed the movement so beautifully. Yeah, you have all of your photographs, even the portraits, have a sort of energy to them. And it was interesting, I was talking to Zach the other day and I was asking him what some of his challenges have been as a photographer. And one of the things he mentioned was it, he had a hard time talking to people. He was really shy. And I look at his work and it's like, there's this, it, they look so relaxed mm. and just sort of at ease and there's sort of an energy there. How do you how did you overcome your fear of talking to people first? And then how do you get your subjects to be so relaxed? Um, <clears throat> well, I got over the fear when I realized that my ability to pay my bills, pay my rent, feed my kids <laughs> was tied to I had to go talk to people. I had to get out there. I had to network. I had to market myself. I had to, to you know, be part of, uh, of a community of people. Um, and if I didn't do that, then I wasn't going to get hired. And if I didn't get hired, then, oh, oh yes, there you go. Uh, if I didn't get hired, then I wasn't going to, you know, be able to do this as a career. And if I'm not a photographer, I work at Starbucks or I work at Kinko's. FedEx <laughs> office. So, so seriously, I mean, if, if, if photography doesn't work out for me in my life, I don't have a plan B. I don't have a backup. Um, this is it. So I have to make it happen. Now, as far as my subjects, um, most most people that get in front of my camera are, you know, coming into a shoot nervous. Um, I've had uh, subjects say to me, walking right in the door, and they say, "Hey, I'm Zach. Uh, you know, welcome to the studio. I'm glad you're here." Da 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 da. And they just look at me and they say, "I'd rather be getting a root canal than be here right now." <laughs> Isn't that great? It's like, okay, well, well, this is going to be a great day then. So <laughs> when, when people are nervous, then I, I dedicate more time at the beginning of the shoe to just talking to them. And uh, if, I've, if I can do my research on them beforehand, I can say, oh, I saw that you were just in such and such town. Oh, yeah, I was just there. It was great. It was beautiful. I did this thing. And I was like, oh, I've traveled there before or I've wanted to go there. What was your favorite thing about it? <clears throat> the, the best, the number one thing that got me over the shyness of, of, of talking to people was I learned how to ask questions. Mm. And if, uh, if you're shy, then just ask questions and take, take the focus off of you, put it on to whoever you're talking to. So who are you? Where are you from? Where have you been? Where were you born? Where were you raised? What kind of music do you like? Do you like to travel? Um, and then if I need, like, if let's say I have a light blow or something majorly technically wrong goes on a shoot and I got to buy some time or I'm just freaking out because I can't find the picture I'm trying to create, I'll just look at my client. I'll look them dead in the eye and I'll say, so bucket list before you die, what's the number one thing you've got to do with your life? Great question. Oh, that's really cool. And, and I just look them right in the eye, and I just get real serious. The number one thing <laughs> you, you have to do before <laughs> so you great. die. And then they start, oh, well, um, wow. And then I'm off running around trying Clicking. to fix a light or, you know, oh, put my wow. kids back together. And, like, they're not focused on me anymore because I don't need them to be focused on me because I'm freaking out because something's going wrong. <laughs> So, and um, so, yeah, so, I use that technique a lot. Are you speaking with them while you're shooting them a lot? Are they act are you yes. actually talking? Yes. And do you think it's that relaxes a, a, your subjects a lot? A photo shoot is a conversation for me. Um, so much to the point I had one time convinced myself, I'd gone through all the rationalization that I had to have that Nikon 200 F2 <laughs> lens, all right? And it's what, $4,000, right? And I had convinced myself it's absolutely the lens I need. It's going to be so amazing. It's going to be so great. It's going to be so gorgeous. I'd look at all the specs, and I'd heard all the people talk about it. And I'd saved up my money. And I was in Kansas City um, doing a workshop, and a guy named Stacy was uh, my city rep there. <clears throat> and he had this lens, this monster honking, you know, like NASA class 
like Hubble <laughs> telescope 200 f2 lens and I'm like oh, oh my god you have this lens and he's like yeah so he pulls it out puts it on a camera and he says here let me take a picture of you so I'm standing somewhere in his studio and he pulls that lens up and his whole head disappeared <laughs> And I, and I knew as soon as I looked at the front element of that lens, of it being pointed to me, I knew immediately, I can't have this lens. I it's can't scared buy people. This lens. Yeah, yeah, because then you can't, there's a wall. It's scary as hell. And then, you know, I'm already short and like, so I'd have to be on a step stool to like <laughs> get over my lens, you know, like, hey, I'm back here, over here, you know, this massive lens in front of my face. It was so intimidating. His whole head disappeared. I couldn't have a conversation with him, uh, and I just, oh, well, that's not the lens for me then. I yeah. love it. So, yeah, speaking of... Um, I want to take a little break, yeah. if you don't mind, and then we'll come back, because we also have some tips from uh, Zach. Yes, we People do. People are asking a lot of questions about... Uh, the hardware, so we can talk about yeah. the lens you did I get. Some, Twitter, some people tweeted in some questions, too. Zach's on Twitter, by the way, Z-A-R-I-A-S, and I've been following him for yes. a long time on Twitter. Great Twitter feed, lots Zarius. of pictures. And Thanks, Zarius. Leo. And you got to go to ZachArias.com and look yeah. at these amazing images that he's very generously sharing, nice quality. Uh, you can really, it's just incredible and very inspiring, I yeah. think. Yep. We're going to take a break, though, and talk a little bit about Carbonite. If you're a photographer, backup is number one, right? You don't want to lose all these images. And, uh, you know, as, as for every photographer, there's another trick or technique of workflow to protect yourself. Um, I'll tell you one thing that uh, Peter Krogh uh, taught me. He was with us uh, in Tasmania. Uh, three, two, one, backup. Three copies of every image, your original and two backups, at least... I know most pros have many, many copies of all their images. Two of them on different media. So one could be a near-term uh, storage, near-line storage, or external hard drives, great. I have, always have two or three big hard drives connected directly to my computer for uh, my photo backup. But one of them has to be off-site. This is what's really important. Because if everything is sitting next to your computer and you have a fire, a, a flood, a tornado, a, you know, a disaster happens, or somebody just steals everything, that's your backups, too. The whole idea of a backup is it has to survive disaster, and that's where Carbonite is so amazing. Carbonite is off-site backup. It's automatic. You put it on your computer, Mac or PC. They're, they're, I should warn you, if you've gone to Lion, they, it works with Lion, but it doesn't do all the things that it does on the uh, Snow Leopard or earlier versions. There, there's going to be an update soon. They're working on that. It's still worth a try if you go to Carbonite.com. If you use the offer code, let me make sure I give you the right offer code here. Uh, for our show, which is Twit Photo, offer code Twit Photo. You can try it free for two weeks. Plus, you'll get 14 months for the price of 12 if you decide to buy. It's still only $59 for a year of, and it's unlimited. It's everything on your internal drive. So all of your images, all of your financial records, all anything that's precious to you on your internal drive is backed up. Carbonite really does a great job. PC or Mac, I want you to try it free for two weeks right now. You don't need a credit card, just the name Twit Photo. Carbonite.com, and then if you decide to buy, use Carbonite.com as the uh, offer code, and you'll get 14 months for the price of two. You gotta have, have that to offsite say, that's backup. That's my favorite part of digital. Is I used to be so worried. What do you about do with negatives? prints and negatives? Yeah. Because you you can't have dupes. I mean, do you, you put them in a safe? Where do you put them? Well, em? luckily, I, my, I was so bad when I was shooting film that I don't really care <laughs> about the. <laughs> Nothing to save now. <laughs> But you're right. This I mean, is what I've digital lets you do. Ten years, but um, you could save all the raw images. It's I have everything. You have to have it in a remote location. You got to. Because otherwise, got to. There's. I mean, I've heard of. I had a photographer friend. Their house burnt down, and they yeah. had backups, but it didn't matter. I have a friend who's a novelist. Remember the Berkeley fires? Oh uh, yeah. Her house burned down and her novel. No oh, backup geez. of that. No That's backup horrible. of that. I mean, she had. Yet I'd rather lose all over. everything before my photos. Yeah. Well, everybody's got something on their hard drive they can't afford to lose. Yeah. Um, we are talking with uh, Zach Arias, uh, ZachArias.com, an amazing photographer. He's got his two-year-old with him, and I think he's giving instructions right now <laughs> to, to, to put the kid back to sleep. Um, but we've got some great – in fact, I would say, just as Zach is a unique photographer in his own right, yeah. his tips are absolutely unique and right on. Yeah, I love them. I love his tips. Zach, are you back with us, or are you taking care of the two-year-old? I am. I, um, yes. What's that? I had to tell Caleb which tool to get. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't about two-year-olds. It was about 
I don't know why I don't have. Where's my cocktail? Why don't we have beer? <laughs> yeah, this, right. this, this, like, we, I, I should have had some delivered to you. Yeah, I'm sorry. I mean, That's my fault. As no, no. We, we've got plenty of beer in the back room, wine, booze of all kinds. I'm sure if you. I was drinking would before you like show. A, would, I'm just oh, all right. Would you like a beer? I'll get you no, a beer. No, I'm okay. Right. I'm good. It is, it is early in the day to be having a oh, beer. Oh, yeah. It's, he's at like 5 o'clock now for him. So um, tip number one, and I, I thought this was really great, and it's not just for photography. It's for anything that you, you really want to do. Don't go into debt. Amen. Why, why do you say it. that? And failed miserably doing so with tens of thousands of dollars of debt. Personal experience. <clears throat> yes. I, I can completely walk away from photography right now, and I don't have a single credit card company I have to contact. Um, no small business loans, um, no short-term credit, no credit cards. I think that. a lot of photographers, though, say, oh, if I could only get that, what, F2 200 lens or... If I could only get that camera, I know I could be much, much better. Well, that actually leads nope. us into a second tip, which is it's not about the gear. It's about the photographer. Can you elaborate on that after you're done <laughs> chugging? <laughs> yes. Um, look, look back. Look back at the greats. Look at Richard Avedon. How many autofocus points did he have in his camera? Right. Uh, none. Uh, right. Did he have TTL? No. Um, and people could say, well, if he had it today, he would have used it. I don't know. There's... Um, uh, there's so many amazing photographers out there right now still shooting 4 by 5 still shooting, you know, um, they might have an autofocus camera, but they only use one AF point. Uh, right. If you get a $20,000 Hasselblad digital, it's got one AF point. Just having autofocus is, is amazing. Um, and the, the better the gear... You, you've got to remember, whatever digital camera you currently have, when it came out, it was amazing. Now, two or three years have gone by, maybe, since you've gotten one, and now, oh, it's old, and it's outdated, and this is, you know, slow, and it's stupid, and I can't handle it anymore, blah, 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 blah. The thing I love to tell people is there are people in the world with less equipment than you have, with older equipment than you have, with more beat-up equipment than whatever you have, and they're taking better photographs than you are. And, and if they had your equipment, they would see it as a blessing. And you are sitting there thinking it's a curse mm -hmm. that if I just had this better lens, if I had this better camera body, if I had this da 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 it would take me out to all these new magical places in photography, la la land. Um, and I know a lot of people who have amazing equipment and take really mediocre photos with it. Um, it's, it's just, yes, good gear is awesome. Yes. I, you know, I don't want to go to a, you know, I don't want to go back to a, an Olympus 3030 or anything like that. But, um, that was my first digital camera. Oh, really? Yeah. You know, it was like my second, I think. Yeah. And then I moved up to the Olympus E10. Remember that one? Yeah. That was a kick-ass camera. Yeah. Really nice camera. It's like four megapixels. It could, uh, <laughs> What, what size at, memory cards uh, were you shooting with? Probably 128 uh, megabytes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I want to say I had a 64 megabyte card. Oh mm. my gosh! <laughs> but it would sync with a flash at 640th of a second shutter speed. Right. It was fantastic. I right. loved that camera. But so so great. Like I'm in a I'm in a process right now. I'm selling a lot of gear. I'm buying new gear. But I'm not buying like the Canon L 1. Point negative two lenses that cost. <laughs> A gajillion dollars. Um, I'm sticking with the one eights and the f twos, and um, but I'm I'm buying the lenses I need, the focal lengths I need. Um, I'm not going crazy with all their biggest, fastest, biggest guns. Um, I just need the ones that perform well for me and for what I do. Um, just simplifying my gear bag. So that's a question we actually had from our Twitter followers. How? Are you, you've used Nikon and Canon. What is your, if you have one camera, and use a Hasselblad too, if you could only yeah. have one camera and all the rest went away, what would it be? Oh, is that the... Is um, that a Leica? What is no, that? No, that's the Fuji, the Fuji is that the Fuji X100? X100? Yeah, uh, why is that so house. great? If I could have this with its 35 millimeter equivalent and I could have another one just like it with a 90 millimeter, I think I'd probably be set. Um, no. Um, I love the X100. I can't even, I can't even 
begin to tell you how much I inappropriately love that camera. Um, it's my favorite camera I've ever owned. But, why? Um, why? Because it has soul. It's got a personality. It it is. Just holding it in your hand, it looks yeah, like it has soul. That. Let me see it again, Zach. That's a beautiful yeah. looking camera. Yeah. It's um, classic. It's very it classic. Is, is it a rangefinder? It's kind of, it looks like a rangefinder. It's really just a compact. It's like a Canon G12 on steroids. Oh. Does it, it has interchange? It PSC sensor in it. Are uh, the lenses it has an interchangeable? Lens. It is not interchangeable. Um, it does have a hot shoe. It will sink. Uh, at a thousandth of a second and beyond. Uh, it's a leaf shutter, things like that. But um, <clears throat> all of my street photography, like I've gotten all back into that again via the X100. Um, yeah, because it's not obtrusive. It's not obnoxious. Yeah, you don't. No, and it's dead quiet. It's the. It's just a silent camera. So it's like Leica in that in that respect, yes. isn't it? Yeah. But instead of uh, you know an M9 with a good 35 mil. Uh, lens on the front of that will get you close to ten thousand dollars. Is that what you uh, used to shoot this? Uh, it makes me think that you did because obviously the, there's a model on the left. There's a pro, there's a real there's like a real quote real photo shoot going on on the left, <laughs> but right. you got the much more interesting shot of this guy walking down Times Square, checking out the model. He's she's right. he's pretty her skirt is pretty short for shooting up. I have to say. <laughs> Well, I'm not sure what York. angle that guy's getting. <laughs> she is looking down at the photographer. Yeah. Uh, but to Catherine, to get back to your question, I, I'm a Nikon guy. I got Canon because of that, that stupid Vincent Laferay dude. Um, <laughs> He'll kill you. Those films, I tell you. Um, I got, that's why I got my Mark II. <laughs> Vince, you I know, love Mark like, II. He screwed it all up for all of us. But um, <laughs> no, no, Vince is a good dude. But. Um, no, I, I, I have meetings with clients and more and more and more and more and more. Do you do video? Do you do video? Do you do video? Oh, interesting. Do you do video? There's, so and there's Canon, some pressure to go that way. Yeah, I mean, you know, I sit down with an art director who, um, you know, knows enough about photography to be dangerous, but can, you know, oh, the 5D Mark II, yeah, it has the 1080p, da 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 and I hear the firmware update brought this, in. This, blah, 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 blah. this is La Foray video, just so you oh, know. Yeah. There he is. That's yeah. not 5D Mark II. I don't know what that is. That's magical, yeah, I, whatever. Yeah, it's amazing. It's the, probably that Phantom or... Maybe it's a red. He's so great. God, he's just so good. I hate him. What do you typically um, use for your source? Uh, either a small little hot shoe flash with a grid, on it um, or a strip. Uh, over the last year I've been using the, the, the Westcott 50 inch strip with the um, with the egg crate grid on them and I love that. So I mean it walks back. Yeah there you go. go. Oh, and then for people that are not don't necessarily have the gear you can use the sun. The sun. Yes I use the sun a lot. Yeah. So, so. you know with shooting with just like one flash light source put the sun off to the side or to the back um, or a street lamp or some, you know, naturally occurring kind of uh, light source. And I, I love this one. This is on. great. The, the wall, the light from the glow from the wall, her silhouette. That's, that's one of the yeah. things that's really notable about your work, Zach, is the lighting and just what dramatic lighting you have. And I was fascinated by the fact that you often just use one light. Can you explain yes. a little bit why you use one light and how you use the one light to get such beautiful images? Um, yeah, and again, sorry, Hawk is... It's okay. Um, it's cool. We're, we're hanging out in the I, living room. Yeah, you're, this, is, this is life. How do we balance Poor life Hawk, and work? Poor Hawk. He's two years old, yeah. he, he, and he's tired. He doesn't know right. what to do. <laughs> and, and Dad's got to do something. So Daddy wants to, we'll get wants that, Daddy we'll to get that. We'll get that back to Hawk in a minute. Um, so... The um, oh, the one light. Um, how do I use it? Well, the reason, like one light, was kind of I become synonymous, synonymous with that name or whatever is just uh, I started a workshop under that name. But people ask me, well, why one? Um, the first reason is that's all I could afford. <laughs> so I had one single flash. Uh, when I got a second flash, it was only to just be a backup to my first flash. I didn't even have a second light stand, um, so I wasn't really shooting with two lights. Um, another reason is, is um, when when I was in photography school, our first portrait class, we only were given one light to use, and we had to hit all of the 
PPA lighting diagrams, you know, the broad, the short, the butterfly, the Rembrandt and hatchet and the reverse osmosis, whatever, um, kind of, of lighting diagrams and had to do it with one. Then uh, by portrait two class, we were given multiple lights for the hair light, rim light, fill light. But I just always liked the look of that one simple light. Um, I like shadows. I know a lot of people like are trying to, you know, eliminate shadows as much as possible in their portraits. And I love it. Like, give me shadows or give me death. I agree. Well, like, yeah, that's, like, I agree. that's one of the interesting things. I think photographers are scared of the dark. And I right. think of film, like... Look how much dark we have in this set. I, I, I'm no, the same are. way. We have a great lighting guy, Brent By, and I didn't, I never want it to be a, at most TV sets, they're, everything's lit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And right. I, that's not normal. You want darkness. You want some interesting stuff. You want places you want to depth. look. And you want depth. It is, it is, it's, a lot of them are scared of dark. And like Spielberg is really one of those photographer, or he Director. loves the dark. Yeah, he loves the dark. And with the, is it Super 8 or what was the movie that just came mm -hmm. out? Super 8, a he lot of dark. He has 10Ks like, or 40Ks or whatever they are in the shots. Yeah. And breaking all the rules and yeah. everything's going black around it. And it's just, it's so dramatic. I have to watch it again and look at the lighting. Yeah, it's the I lights. I have seen that movie The yet. sources are in the frame, which is like a huge no-no in film. Right. But um, he, it's he, Spielberg, he can do whatever he want, you know. So yes. it's a really good yeah. movie for watching for lighting. So, I'll have to look at that. So you have a DVD, right? That's on your workshop. Uh, yes. Awesome. And actually, there's a funny it's story. It's actually on sale right now. Can I mention? The, the, can I tell the story uh, about uh, this shot from 500 uh, sure. pixels? Uh, we were looking at it before. Um, tell tell the story behind this. Yeah, it was funny. I was just walking around Times Square and I saw this girl putting her boots on and she's starting to strike her pose and. And I'm like, ooh, a photo shoot. Let me go over and see what's going on over there. And so she's, you know, working her thing to the camera. And there's a guy laying on the ground with a camera taking pictures of her. And um, he's kind of directing her and things like this. And, and I just started watching all of the reactions around her. Um, and so I kind of stood behind the photographer. I really wish I could remember his name right now. Um, he gave me his card, and I've forgotten his name. But but that's so a good I'm lesson right watching. there, by the way, which is look at the things the other everybody's not looking, looking at. Looking at, yeah. The story right. behind the story. And you get a great shot got, as a result. You got this girl in a short skirt and big boots in, you know, Times Square. Like, it's going to... People just passing by immediately within that 10 feet of hers are going to take notice. So, so I just kind of hung out and waited. Um... And was just I was just looking for interesting uh, reactions to her, and this guy in his nice white press suit, holding his wife's hand. That's my favorite part of the photograph. Is he's looking at her, uh, she's you know posing to somebody, but just off to the right side of the frame, you can tell he's he's holding someone's hand. So he's uh, he's walking with somebody, and then. And then what's his expression? I don't know. Is he in judgment of her? Is he looking down at her? Or is he kind of uh, intrigued by her? So uh, the photographer, he's shooting, and he pulls out a, a flash, and he's trying to prop it up on a camera bag. And I walk over, and I go, hey, man, uh, you know, yeah, I see you trying to get your flash out and balance it here. You want me to hold it for you? And he looks up at me, and he goes, you're Zach Arias. <laughs> I have your DVD. What are you doing here? <laughs> and I'm like, hey. He's like, um, and I'm like, do you need some help? Like, I can hold the flash or something for you. One light. And, one um, light. <laughs> is, is he out there with one light, Zach? Is he doing he's your, out there your DVD? With, yeah, and an old school Vivitar, like 285. And like, yeah. like That's so great. Um, you know, but as I was looking at, of course, as a photographer, you're like critiquing, like, why would you put your light there? And really, oh, like, no. your light <laughs> I do that all the time. I'm all thinking how I'd light it. Right. And so I'm all ready to like jump in because uh, my studio manager, Dan, and I, we want to do a series of interventions uh, <laughs> because we have these photo shoots that happen all over Atlanta. You'll, any given weekend, we call them the model mayhems. And, um, You'll just be driving along downtown Atlanta. You'll see a big wall of graffiti, and there's some chick in a short skirt pushing her butt up against some lens and, like, on-camera flash at 3 in the afternoon going off. And oh, no. You just, it, you just you cringe. 
So I want to get a big, like, a white panel van and just pull up screeching tires and jump out with, like, octobanks and big lights and pro photos and, and hand the guy, like, a, a Hasselblad H4D and take meter readings and just be like, all right, five, six, five hundredth of a second, go. And then just... <laughs> Make a Watch video. That would be a great I video know. series. But Photo you, interventions. So, so speaking, yes. speaking of that, Zach, when you are doing these critiques that you do, what are mm -hmm. like the three most common critical things that you comment on? Like things that uh, is most often people could improve on. Eyes are dark, so people aren't lighting the eyes very well, and then they resort to post, uh, you know, Photoshop post-production, trying yeah. to fix it later. Um, what, what, can so some, you, what can one do to get light in the eyes? Flash? Just bounce? A reflector. Like, uh, and sometimes it's just simply, when you're taking a portrait of someone, um, look at where is your light source. So it's the sky. If the sun is hitting a big building, that's a light source. So find the light source and just face your subject into that light source. All right, so, um, or a reflector or a little bit of flash. You don't need like 14 million watt seconds for fill flash. But if you're looking at your subject, and this is what I do, if their forehead is brighter than their eyes, then I know I'm in bad light. Because by the time I expose for their eyes, their forehead's gonna be overexposed. If I expose properly for their forehead, then their eyes are gonna be too dark. And if you're looking at your subject and the eyes are just, they're just too dark, then you just simply need to turn them. I can demonstrate. Let's see. There's a big bank of windows right over there. Yeah, you're there. perfectly so lit, I, of course. I know. It's like, yeah. I don't well, think that was an accident. So <laughs> if I face that window, right. you can see light in my I eyes. I love those, yeah, love the, hair, the sparkle in your yeah. eyes. Yeah, see a little catch light. And if I move away from the light source, sorry, I, I, I wasn't preparing to do this as a demonstration. This is good. I like it. On the fly. If I move yeah. away from it. Yeah, where is it? You, your attractive level just went down, Zach. Right. You see how <laughs> this side of my face is getting too bright? Right. And my eyes are now darker. Right. And then the more exposure that comes in for the eyes, the more this side of my face is just going to over and over and over expose. So if I just simply turn like this, as I pull, this place has no Wi-Fi, all right? This is ghetto. Like, so I'm Ethernet corded here. That's well, probably and, good. Uh, yeah, actually, it's good. Yeah, we like that. We would have told you to do that. <laughs> right. It's better that way. Um, it just makes it but, hard to you know, I'm, I'm show up. sharing this Ethernet with, like, 5,000 other rooms. Um, okay. So just getting myself back towards the light source the the exposure equalizes better. Yep. We're going to take so, a, a, a break. Uh, uh, eyes are too dark. We have three pictures that Zach's working on today. Oh, great. And we'll take a look at the three. They're incredible images, and we'll do that in just a second. Before we do, though, very quickly, I just want to mention our friends at uh, Netflix. We've talked about them before. Zach, you ever use Netflix? Oh, all the time. What's your and, favorite movie? Uh, Schindler's List, Ooh, number one all-time favorite There's movie. a great choice. Um I love Schindler's I List. I doubt, but I'll check that that's on instant, uh, watch instant. I wonder, I don't know. It is, you, you know, have to get the discs going to be soon. But you can watch I Raging think. Bull. So if you like black and white movies, you've got Raging Bull. Watch Instantly is, is just, to me, uh, it's just like instant gratification for people who love movies. Now, not every movie, as you just saw, is on Watch Instantly. Tens of thousands of movies are. There's almost certainly something you'll want to watch tonight. And the thing is, you don't have to wait for the disc to come. You don't have to go to the movie store. It's convenient. You can watch it on your iPad, your iPhone. Uh, you can't do that with a disc. You can watch it on any computer. You can watch it on your PlayStation 3 or your Xbox 360 or your Nintendo Wii. I, I actually, ooh, here's one that looks kind of interesting. Lost they have a lot of good Amazon. shows on there, too. A lot of good TV. Great. They have and these really are good, documentaries. Like, I like Showtime Network, and they have a lot of really good Showtime shows on there. This looks really cool. A documentary about secrets of the dead lost in the Amazon, a PBS documentary. So, dogs decoded. These are the documentaries. So that's the point. Is there's plenty to watch here. TV shows, movies. All you have to do if you want to try this free for 30 days is go to Netflix.com/twit. It's 7.99 a month, which is the best deal in entertainment you can get. That's less than a movie ticket for a month worth of unlimited streaming from Netflix. 
I use a Roku box to watch. Now, I know you all are already Netflix members. We're doing ads to people who already bought the product. So tell your friends. Do me a favor. Tell your mom, grandma, netflix.com slash twit, a month free of streaming. Then if they like it, by the way, you can get them a gift certificate, which is a great yeah, gift. That's I a give really my mom gift. Netflix every year. You don't know year. how to get people. Yep. On her birthday, she gets a year's worth of Netflix. It's a, it's a great gift. Netflix.com slash twit. We thank them for their support of Twit Photo. So, Zach, you sent us three photos that you're working on right now. Yes. This one blows me away. This is uh, <clears throat> people on a train. Yeah. And you know, it's funny, like, uh, this is the weird thing for me to say. This is one of my favorite all-time pictures I've ever made. And I really, I don't like, oh, let me show you all my favorite pictures I've ever made. Like, because I'm the typical photographer that says, you know what, my pictures suck, and I <laughs> I suck, and, like, I need to get so much better. And every time, every time I take a picture that I like, within 72 hours, I will have picked it apart and torn it to pieces and say, you know, and declare it to be junk. But this picture, there's something, um, these three strangers on a train, and it was a grab shot. I just, I was holding my camera on my lap, and I was looking down the train, just not making eye contact with them. The girl on the left, she was clocking me pretty heavy, because <laughs> I had this camera pointing at them. Right. Um, and I have a few frames of her staring straight at me, like, what are you doing? But the X100... Nice and quiet. Yeah, it doesn't um, look like a big pro it's camera. It's not very obtrusive Like at a all. 5D Mark no. II. No. That, no. that would raise people's suspicion. Oh, yeah. But that, you, yeah. you could be a tourist with that camera. Yeah. You I'm, could be, I, and I, but it's still... All you have to do is We know that you're not. And <laughs> you're done. But I, I love that picture. I don't know what it is. It's just, it's there. Is it the guy I, who is so pensive with his 7-Eleven? I feel like it's, I, it's sort of, to me, is the tension. Yes. You know, and just how close they are but in what different worlds they're in yeah. at the same time and the the having the one single bar in there sort of just even disconnects them further oh, yeah that's true doesn't it but they're all and so I'm, I'm all in their own story. world yeah and i'm about story like i love yep. i want to know your story like if we ever meet and we sit down and have a beer i'm going to be like tell me your story who are you? What have you been through? What's happened to you? And and what are you doing to overcome these things? And like, tell me your story. I want to know. I want to know your story. Do you think that's and a I'm, sign of good people photographers or people that are just interested in I people? Guess, the same thing. I guess you it have has to be, to be in yeah. some regard. Yeah. I mean, you know, I know some good photographers. They shoot great people stuff, and they couldn't care less about people's stories. So I can't say that that's a, a wide brush to paint with. But but um, photojournalism is my a heart of heart of heart of hearts, uh, but I have a family that I have to support and um, responsibilities, and um, you can just you just can't can't live that life. I was told early on in my career that I could have a family or I could have a career <laughs> when it came to photojournalism, and so I went the commercial route because I love you know being in the studio. I love lighting. I love air conditioning. Um, <laughs> You know, I like working with crews of people, so I like that life too. Yeah. Um, and that the X100, I think one reason why it's so visceral for me is it, it's putting me back into my old kind of photojournalism roots. I all I want to do is take this camera and hit the streets, and and I I, I can go to New York and I can spend 16-hour days on the streets just walking walking, 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 and shooting pictures. You know, it confirms your judgment of this picture is the chat room's been going crazy about what the story is. He wants to ask her out, but he's too nervous. She's texting, why hasn't oh, he yeah. asked me out yet? The, uh, the lady is saying, oh, these kids today. I mean, they're, right. they're telling the story. You can make your story. own interpretation. And that's, that's what makes this interesting. It's ambiguous enough that you can. Well, that's, and my, that, that, my personal interpretation is they're all acting as strangers, but they're about to pull off some massive heist. <laughs> so they're just having to play really cool. You're in the wrong place, yeah. Zach. Now, did you have to yeah. get releases from them, or could you? I mean, what's the what's the issue on legality on using this image? Um, I just hope they don't watch your show, Leo. No, <laughs> Good thing um, they don't. No, if I if I tried to sell it commercially, if it if it became a you you know, BlackBerry that. ad, a campaign. Right. Um, and I sold that picture, and it went out as a billboard or some sort of commercial campaign. Um, I'd be hosed. I'd You'd be, be in sued trouble. to the nines. Right. Um, but but for they are in public, so there's, there's no expectation. Well, if it's of journalism, it could be published in a journalistic right. 
like yeah. any newspaper, well, any that's magazine. That's what we've done now, in effect, really. But if it's... I can make money on it. Yeah. Right. You as can't. long as it's editorial. Exactly. You're doing a, a great series, and I've seen a few of these on 500PX, of, uh, of seniors in their native environment. Yeah. And I think that's what this next one is. Oh, I love this. <clears throat> Talk about a, story. A faces and Spaces. Um, it, it started with, um, really, and this is going to sound just so selfish, really, but I was, uh, I was at a portfolio review uh, in New York a few months ago, and uh, some of the feedback that I kept getting was, you know, we're looking at your portfolio here. There's nobody over the age of 30 in your book. We need to see some diversity. Um, we need to see, we need to see something other than, you know, young indie rock dudes. So I was like, all right, well. So be me being kind of, uh, you know, take one bit of advice and take it too far. I put out on Twitter. I said, all right, I'm doing a new portrait project. Um, and so I'm shooting seniors, and I am looking for for portrait subjects that are 70 year old. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't have anyone probably over the age of maybe 40 in my book at all. Um, and so I decided I'm going to do this. I love it. Um, I, I don't, and it kind of, uh, the, a personal connection to me is I never got a great picture of my grandfather. Mm. Um, I wasn't really into photography while he was still alive. Um, and I never got a great picture of my dad, and I was into photography um, when my dad was still alive. And I never got, like, I never went through the process of saying, Dad, I need to get a great portrait of you. I never did that. Mm. So, um, so that's my personal connection. My, you know, prostitute connection to it is I need to diversify my portfolio. Uh, but so it's a two-part process. I shoot really tight shots of everyone's face like that. <laughs> and, um, and I'm trying to stay away from the really dramatic, ooh, here's a senior citizen with wrinkles and right. let's shoot it real dramatic. And I want it to be fun. Um, I, I don't want it to, uh, I just don't want it to be dramatic. And How do you get how do you get this reaction? How do you get this fun out of the seniors? It's, it's hard. It's really <laughs> difficult. Um, because I'm, uh, so far, I've shot three. Uh, and I have two more on the books so far. And I'm trying to shoot about 15 people for this project. Uh, 15, 20 people. And so I just ask for it. And sometimes I get it and sometimes I don't. But it's, you know, you're dealing with, with uh, older folks. They're usually a little more conservative. And, and I'm asking them to give me a silly face. <laughs> so you say, uh, give me a silly face. I say, yeah. I say, you know what? You know when you take a picture of a kid, they can't ever have a serious face. They can't ever give you a good smile. They always have to crack up and make some stupid face to the camera. And I would love for you to do that right here. And... And so far, of the three that I've, I've photographed so far for this project, all of them have stuck their tongue out. <laughs> oh, that's wow. the natural. That's the natural. Right? So how are you? How are you pitching out. this project to people? How are you getting people's trust to want to be got involved? On Twitter. Really? And people are coming yeah. to you. I love this they, image. Hey, I think everybody. when you get people I'm, in their natural environment. Um, it tells such a story. Oh, it tells such a story about the about the guy, yeah. and there's his picture in the service. It's John. Yep, that was the, uh, this is um, the grandfather of a photographer named Courtney. Um, this is her grandfather, and uh, his name is John. And that picture of him behind him is, uh, he is graduating from Airborne School. Uh, wow. That's the day he graduated. He was uh, 101st Airborne. Um, <clears throat> so, um, he, yeah, just an amazing guy. And, um, and... I, so many. I'm sitting here pointing at my screen. There's so many things on those walls that are just. It's amazing. You want yeah. to zoom in and look at I know all you of his see, life well, this, is here. The same with the last photo. You really want to look at all the details. Yeah, and don't you? It's interesting because I I appreciate. I can't shoot this way because I like being like so in person and up in front with people. Mm -hmm. But when I look at this type of photography, it's just so interesting. That more journalistic side. I love it. So. It's a new direction for me. Um, or it's, um, it's, it's, I don't know. I'm, I'm in a weird spot in my photography in that I've been pursuing this for 15 years. 
and I am currently, right now, 15 years into the game, I feel like I'm finding my stride for the first time, like really hitting on who I'm supposed to be as a photographer. That's great. Yeah. Um, Isn't it always a weird time for you, though? I mean, aren't you always... Do you ever feel settled? Are you always growing and no. pushing yourself? No. And Sounds like, I, Catherine, you're you, talking about yourself. I, yeah, I know. Well, it's the same. You, well, once he said that Avedon was a horrible photographer. Elaborate yeah. on that. Well, he was. He had to have been. You know, I mean, <laughs> everyone sucked at some point, except like Jeremy Cowart and Joey L. They were great out of the womb, oh, I so guess. So at but, one time, oh, Avedon yeah. was a terrible photographer. Well, no, right. but the point of this at is, I think... Time. Like th when Avedon said, what is this? It's a camera. <laughs> what does it do? It takes pictures. How do you do that? Well, you put this film and this thing and you point it and you make, you find your light and then you go to this dark room and then, oh, I, I think about it. He had to have sucked. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, but it's... Know, everybody it's sucks. I think it's really important to recognize that because especially with the internet and you're looking at all these people doing oh. extraordinary work, oh. it's intimidating. It's very and intimidating. And so you do have to think... Everyone sucked at some point. And I look at my old work, and it's awful. Like, the first 10 years of shooting, I think if it was all thrown away, I don't even think I would notice. One yeah. more thing I want Yusef, to say. Uh, that, that goes to an old Yusef Karsh quote, one of my favorite portrait photographers of all time. Uh, Karsh wrote that it takes 10 years to become a photographer, just to become a photographer. Then you start becoming who you yeah. are. You know, as a photographer. I think that's, that's true of everything. In fact, that's what Malcolm Gladwell observed in Outliers. Is it takes oh. 10,000 hours, which is, for, for most things, about 10 years yeah. to become... I think I'm at about 1,000 hours right now. <laughs> 9,000 to go. I love that you're doing the Instagram stuff. I want to point that out real quickly because I think a lot of super high-end photographers like Zach might eschew the idea of a place where you share your iPhone photos and yet you've got so many great images you, here. Yeah, his stuff, by the way, Zach, your stuff's so inspiring. I love all the kids' stuff you do on Instagram of your boys. Thanks. It's really Thanks. good. I love, That's I just, I love Instagram. Um, all of these are iPhone. That's um, amazing. I would shoot hundreds of pictures on my iPhone until I got that stupid X100. Now my iPhone is just, you know, I only make phone calls. <laughs> on it. Um, so this is before you got the little point and shoot. You could use the right. iPhone. Right. Because, uh, you know, I want to be one of those photographers that always has a camera with them, and I'm not. And I hate carrying a DSLR around. And, Hallelujah. Um, so, so, don't, uh, so don't, it was my phone. I mean, you so could take great pictures with this iPhone. Hey, it's Zach, amazing. I feel the same way. Don't you always want to wonder, like, there's the people that carry their camera everywhere, and you feel guilty? Like, am I not really a photographer because I don't want to carry my SLR exactly. wherever I go? Right. Right. And Jay Mizell screams at you for you're not a real photographer. <laughs> I know. I'm not a real photographer. <laughs> Yeah, and, then, you, and he, then, then Jay shows you what he shoots on a daily basis, yeah. and you're like, oh, my God, okay, I really need to have a camera with me. <laughs> and, and, you know, so I've tried. Uh, my wife and I, Meg and I, went on our belated honeymoon to uh, Italy last year, took a 5D Mark II, and it stayed in the room. Because I'm like, good, mm -hmm. you're on your honeymoon. You don't want to be, yeah. Yeah, so I took pictures on my iPhone. Good. And, and some great um, ones. What is your Instagram handle? Is it uh, Zarius? Zarius, right. yeah. Everything's e consistent. Easy to find, Zach, ZachArius.com, Zarius on Twitter and Instagram. So, Zach, I know you've gone through a lot of hardship throughout your this whole process of being a photographer for 15 years. What would you say is your lowest moment, and how did you overcome that? Um, lowest moment was having to walk away from it all. Uh, my family breaking apart, going through a divorce, um, all of that, and leaving photography for about two years and wow. just going and getting a job, you know, which my last job was Kinko's. Um, so you weren't kidding when you said you'd be working at Kinko's or Starbucks. Mm -mm. No, honestly, if you took it all away from me today, it'd be Starbucks, FedEx office, um, or, uh, you know, temp agency going in trying to get warehouse work. That's, that's honest to God, that's all I know. Um, if I had to go get a job, maybe I'd go try to be a photo editor um, as a backup plan kind of thing. Um, but uh, yeah, that's, so I got a job at Kinko's. Uh, I was living in my brother and sister-in-law's basement uh, with, with my son Caleb and um, just trying to put it back together. Um, <clears throat> there's a quote 
about photography and it's about many industries too i've heard it kind of told but photography calls many but chooses few yes and i thought oh, i was neat. called uh but not chosen and that that was probably the lowest point in my wow. photo career i'm at kinko's and i'm taking passport photos on a polaroid camera um and i hate those people because you know it's passport pictures so that means they're getting on an airplane they're going somewhere yeah, I really need this picture because I have to leave for Europe in two weeks. Yeah, okay, well, you're not getting any sympathy from me right now. <laughs> <laughs> like, I have two weeks of PowerPoint presentations I have to copy and bind, you know, for some jerk lawyer down the street. Um, so, um, so getting to come back to photography and get to make it happen again, um, I, you know, it's, it, I hold it with an open hand. Because um, it could all go away again, something could happen. A sickness, a, a busted knee. I'm sitting here with a like a torn MCL right now with my knee in a cast. But um, it could all fall apart. Something could happen, and and I'd have to not be a photographer anymore. And I'm okay with that. I'm all right that if I'm going to not be a photographer, um, been there, done that. It's a lesson um, for us like, all. <clears throat> be grateful. Yeah. Be grateful. Yeah. Yeah. What well, during these different careers of re-entering and entering at all. Do you have any tips for photographers that are just getting started? Yeah, I go back to that stay out of debt. All right, number one, stay out of debt. Uh, number two, whatever gear you have, make the absolute very most of it. Um, and you need to look at it as it's a Mr. Miyagi kind of like karate kid situation that if you can't do it with the gear you have, then you don't deserve anything better. You know what I'm saying? I see, I see photographers who just learned how to launch Photoshop for the first time, and they have a $2,000-8512 lens around their neck, and they have no clue what they're doing with, as a photographer. And they're on auto white balance and auto aperture, and they have no clue, yet they have the finest gear in the world. They haven't earned it. Think of it as you've got to earn it. Like if you saw a 32-year-old in a polo shirt and khakis riding you know, a Harley chopper, they didn't earn that motorcycle yet. They need to go get the moped. And maybe when they're about 50, they can have the yeah. Harley. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you ever I see know. a guy in you. khakis and a polo on a Harley and how stupid that looks? <laughs> you know, what? I, I, no offense. I just probably pissed off 50 people there. But now I'm getting on my soapbox. So whatever gear you have, like, use it um, and make the very most out of that. Um, and then uh, your people skills. People skills, people skills, people skills. Uh, you've got to be networking. You've got to be out talking to people about what you do. If, if, and I, I always say this as though I'm speaking to an audience that is trying to do this as a living, um, because I mean, my apologies, but I'm a whore. Like I'm in it for the money. Like, not really, but, but that's the only way I can think. Um, when I talk to people, are like, no, I just like it as a hobby, and I just enjoy it. Just, just stay right there. Just enjoy it as a hobby. Like, don't ever think about making a dime doing this because it turns into a whole new beast. Um, and I love this beast, and I love this game, and, and I'm in it for life, uh, hopefully, if I do it smart. Um, but so just all to say that if, if you want to do this as a business, worry about your photography more than your branding. Just stay real simple with your branding. Don't use Comic Sans. Don't use Papyrus. Don't use any, you know. <laughs> yeah any of those crappy fonts. <laughs> just keep it real clean, real simple, and just make great photography. Don't cover it up in Photoshop sauce. Don't, you know, try to rebuild it. Like, just keep it clean, keep it simple, uh, keep it true, keep it bold. Um, and just work on your craft, the craft of photography. Like, don't, think, think of a furniture builder. Don't go and try to build a whole dining room set. Just go try to build an amazing chair. That's all you got to do today is just build a chair, not the table and the hutch and the chandelier and everything. Oh, this is my WTF gallery. I You're love this gallery. <laughs> it's just um, silly we'll stuff. We'll end it on this one. <laughs> yeah. Um, so That's just gorgeous. keep it simple and then network, 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 network. If people don't know you're alive, you're not going to get hired. And if you th he's like, well, I have a blog, and I'm doing all the SEO stuff, and I have a website, that doesn't matter. None of it matters. 
like SEO doesn't matter. Uh, having the super awesomest, most coolest website in the world doesn't matter. Like the number one thing that matters is personal relationships. Zach, you're such an inspiration. I have to say, I'm. Catherine said you were going to be a, a great guest, and she was absolutely right. This is so. Well, I'm sorry to let you down. <laughs> <laughs> really great to talk to you. I think we to need you. to give all our guests a beer, and then everything will be good. Yeah. <laughs> ZachArias.com. No, it's been great. Thank you so much. Thank you so Thank much you so for joining us. Thank you so much for coming us. on. You can, you can go take uh, Hawk for a walk. Yeah, that's what Meg's doing right now. So you're old. So can he walk right now? Or is he, oh, sure. Yeah. When yeah. do they start walking? One and one. Yeah. Oh, he's this, this kid. He probably runs this, faster than you with your knee. He does. He, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> and um, we, we made the great, the great mistake of being, you know, like, let's have fun with our last one. So... He's Hawk Danger Arius. Danger is his middle name. Oh, no. Uh, he set it up. And he's living up to that. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, go play with your son. Thank you thank so you much so for much. taking right. some time on your vacation to be with us. Yeah. We really appreciate it. Well, thank it. you so much. Uh, yeah, Leo, Catherine, thank you very much for having me. I love your new studio. I mean, really, go seriously, ahead. congratulations. I know that you've worked very hard to get to this point. Yeah, it resonated what you were talking about, uh, you know. I'm I'm not the guy in the polo shirt and the Harley. I had to. No, you worked. You earned it. I earned my my Harley. You know, I I agree with it, Zach. Do you know that I just bought the eighty five one two? Yeah. I, and how long have you been doing this? I've been shooting since nineteen ninety six. Wow. Yeah. And I just All bought right. it, and I, you know what? I appreciate it, and I can actually you do use it, the lens you? for what it can do. Yeah. Because yep. I understand what the difference is. You buy if you buy all this gear and you don't understand the difference, then you can't really actually take advantage of what it is. It. So. Yep, absolutely. And it's so sad when people do it on credit, and then it's just yeah. like take that crap yeah. back, pay off that credit card, and get an eighty-five one eight for three hundred bucks used and <laughs> rock it. Yeah. Catherine does do beautiful photos. You got to go to CatherineHallStudios.net to see uh, her. CatherineHall.net. CatherineHall.net. Yeah. To see your stuff. This is one of your images. In fact, yeah. this is our assignment for the week. Yeah. So we're gonna announce. We're gonna look at our the honorable mentions for the flags. Well, we're gonna save that for next week. We're saving we that for next so week. We are so way over time right oh, now. Okay. Well, then we'll go to through two of them. Um, for this coming week, we want to do soft light. So I'm showing you guys two different subject matters. They're both soft light, and you can see there's sort of a Rembrandt on there. Yeah. Um, Beautiful. If you have gear. If you have soft boxes and gear, just a couple tips. The bigger the source, meaning the bigger the box, the softer the light, and the closer the light is to your subject, the softer it is. Um, however, that works just the same if you're just using window light. So um, pla placement with the window light is really important. You don't want them standing right in front of the window. You want them standing back a little bit. So experiment, and let's shoot for that soft Rembrandt light. And I'm excited to see what you guys That's post. Great. Yeah. So it's a Flickr group, so if you go to Flickr, uh, we should probably make, I don't know, do they have, I guess they do have groups on 500 pixels. We should, maybe we should make that, uh, uh, maybe our, our uh, goal is to, is to move to move. Uh, 500 pixels and follow, follow Zach and his move away from Flickr. It's nothing, it's nothing it's, I agree with you, it's not there's, there's something wrong with Flickr, it's just that it's been abandoned, It's, it's Yahoo. Yahoo. Yeah. It's just Yahoo. Uh, but we do <laughs> still have the group. Yahoo. It explains it, you know. If you, Give it to uh, Google. If, if you go to Flickr.com, we've got a, a Twit Photo group. All you have to do is go to Groups, go to Search, and search for T-W-I-T, oops, T-W-I-T-P-H-O-T-O, and uh, you will find our group, and you can submit your photo. Put the soft light tag in there. You'll see Catherine's shining face. Lots of great images. Sorry we didn't get to do the flags this week. We will do it we'll next, do it next week, week, and we will do Two next soft week. Light. Double up. Yep. No prizes, no awards, just this the honor. Honor. And the and and the feedback, which as Zach yeah. pointed out, is very important. Thank you, Zach. Thank you, Zach. Thank you, everyone. It's, Thank you all for it's being been here. Real. We'll see you next time on Twitter. All right, absolutely. Thank you guys. Love to be back. <laughs>